Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. It is your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Reach out to me directly for pricing. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Today, we're discussing a 500-piece limited edition for the 2022 model year. Oh, and one more thing. It is a U.S. limited edition. This is the Grand Seiko High Beat GMT SBGJ 261. It is the successor to the famous SBGJ 227 Peacock. This is a Peacock in its own right, but with a blue Peacock dial. So, it is a 44 g GS style case in stainless steel that measures 40 millimeters in diameter, 14.3 millimeters thick from lug tip to lug tip, 46.2 millimeters, and from end length to end length, total distance across the wrist is 50 millimeters with a 19 millimeter spacing between the lugs. We'll throw this watch on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist. You can see it's quite handsome. On the bracelet, as you see it right here, I would recommend this watch for a wrist no smaller than 14 centimeters circumference. If you were to take the solid end length bracelet off and put it on a strap, I think you could wear it on a wrist as small as 13 and a half centimeters circumference, which would make it viable for a lady. It is not particularly thick, nor is it particularly thin. It won't fit underneath the tightest of dress cuffs, but you should loosen your cuff a little bit if your cuff is that tight. I find this watch fits underneath most sleeves and all jacket cuffs. You can see how high it sits. You can see down the barrel, it's nowhere near the edge of my 16 centimeters circumference wrist. Here's over the top one more time. Taking a look at the bracelet, you can see it has a conforming end link, so it looks highly integrated with the case. We have a little rolled bevel on the shoulders of the links. The outer faces are polished. The tops are satinated. Then we have polished intermediates flanking the center link. We have removable links fixed by screws, and you can see we have intermediate-sized links on both sides for intermediate sized wrists, a uh, thick gauge, single fold, deploying clasp, snap shut. We have twin trigger deployment, so it's not gonna open until you press both triggers. There's a Grand Seiko logo that's media blasted and polished. We'll roll around to the case. This is the famous 44GS polyhedron, first seen on the original in 1967. It's one of the heritage designs at Grand Seiko and one of their most recognizable stylistic features. So you have these remarkable facets at the end of the lugs. You have a combination of creases and curves through the middle, and all of the polish is done via a spinning tin plate. The artisan, who takes up to three years to learn the art, holds the surface to be milled directly against the spinning tin plate on a Zalitz machine, and they call this Zaratsu finish at Grand Seiko, and it is a mirrored surface that is optically almost flawless, much like black polished components in Swiss high-end watch movements, only it's not a screw or a regulator, it is the entire case. So this is a hand-finished watch inside and out. We have a combination of satin and polish for contrast. We have a screw-down crown. The watch is 100 meters water-resistant. We have a bezel that's got a little bit of a conical profile that flares out, and then a conical profile that flares in. We have a Grand Seiko logo on that somewhat countersunk screw-down crown. The dial, and I'll try to show you this because my light doesn't flatter it, but it has a stamped pattern that's much like the feathers of a peacock. And then we have a lustrous lacquer that goes on top of that, so you can see the pattern through the lustrous blue. We also have beautiful dial furniture, the logo, the hands, the frame for the date, the indices. These are made by hand and finished on diamond-tipped micrometric milling tools by artisans who only make these tiny parts all day long. And I've always said that Grand Seiko dial quality is on par with if not better than Rolex. It really is the standard in the luxury class, short of something that's hand enameled or engraved or painted. This is really as good as it gets, especially since these little parts are also placed by hand. You could see that the fasting on the Dauphine hands for the hour and minutes mirror polished on its knife-like edges and then satinated across the top. It's very impressive. So we have two time zones here. This is the high beat GMT, automatic winding, 10 beats per second, 55 hour power reserve. You've got a feature that allows you to move the local hour hand, even as the reference time, the minute hand, and the seconds hand are not affected. Travel east, travel west as you're jumping time zone. The date will move in both directions. Now you pull it to the second stop, and not only is it remarkably steady for an extended stem, it's a solidly built watch, but now everything moves in sync. You have these two different time zones. You have the 12 hour and the 24 hours. So you can follow both of them all at once. On the reverse side, we do have a sapphire case back. It's limited edition of 500. Features a caliber 
that is based on the standard 9S. It's the 9S86. Again, automatic winding, 36,000 vibrations per hour like a Zenith L Primero. Pivots on 37 joules. It is hand adjusted in six positions, which is one more than the chronometer standard. Grand Seiko and Seiko make every part of the watch right down to shock protection and even the very lubricants used. It has a timing tolerance of no worse than minus three plus five seconds per day, which is actually better than a COSC certified Swiss chronometer. And one of the nice advantages of this movement is when it is in action, because of the 10 beat per second rate, the seconds hand sweeps smoother than a conventional 4 hertz, 3 hertz, or 2.5 hertz Swiss movement. So reach out to Team Also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.